my name is Jennifer, although that's not really important. Um, I just wanted to talk to you today about the Lord, about his heart, and about suffering, and what that means. It's really hard sometimes to go through life suffering every day, and people look at you and you look fine, right? You look fine on the outside. You have a smile. You have two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, and you look perfectly normal. And you feel normal most of the time, but I imagine if you're going through something chronic, something every day, it wears on you. You get weary, tired, you feel unworthy. I certainly do. But God doesn't. He doesn't get weary. He doesn't get tired. And he never looks at you as unworthy. Somehow, I, I can't understand the relationship between the Lord and his children, but somehow he loves us and loves us and loves us, even though we do the same thing over and over and over. He still loves us. I don't understand how this miraculous relationship works, but it's beautiful and it's freeing. But you do have to accept it. You do have to learn to realize that God loves you so unconditionally, so fiercely, that he won't stop pursuing you. He will pursue you always, no matter what you've done, no matter where you are. So, he pursues you always. He loves you no matter what you've done, no matter what. And on the days where it gets so tiring and so weary, he's not tired or weary. So he can carry you. But we have to let him carry us. And I know, it's like we say that. But practically, what does that look like? Well, it looks like day in and day out, one step at a time, one breath at a time, one problem at a time. Just give it to the Lord. You talk to Him. Sometimes I spend all day in my thoughts with Him. And some days I spend all day in my thoughts, in my head. But it's a much better experience if He's there guiding me all through the day, telling me what to do. Because if you're in something chronic, if you're in something every day that's tough, it's easy to lose track. It's easy to lose track of what's exciting, what brings you joy, what's really important. Sometimes it feels like the pain that we're in right now, it, it, it's everything. It's, it's our whole life and, and our soul and our spirit. It's, it's, it, it's in, all involved and it is, it is. But it's not to the extent that we think it is because God is holding us because God is carrying us, because our ultimate home is heaven, not here. So when I'm sitting here in this pain, in, in that, that daily, every day, I can know that my God, He's already in my tomorrows and in forever in the future, all of my forever, He's there. So if I have this pain now, if I'm in this chronic situation now, it's because he's doing something through it. It has to be. We have to trust him in that. Some things make no sense. Some things we just don't understand. But God does. And he has a purpose where he's carrying you, which is heaven, ultimately. So when we're here and we're in the daily and we're ugh, forgetting about heaven and we're focused on the pain and, oh, I'm so sick and I'm sick of this and I'm sick of being sick. And I'm sick of being tired. And you're so, what do you hear? Sick, sick, sickness, tired. You're, every day you feel these things and you're weary and you're weary. But God's not. I know that may not seem so exciting. But think about it for a minute. If he's not weary, then you are. That gives you the ability to rest and relax like he's always wanted us to do. He's sort of forcing us into these situations of rest, of relaxing, of 
of being able to focus on him more. All of us in, in quarantine right now can experience that focus on the Lord, can experience that attention to the Lord. And I can say that I am so tired <laughs> and I am weary, but every day he carries me and gives me rest. I don't want to talk about me and the circumstances I've gone through and everything that that means for me because that's not what's important because the past it made me into who I am just like yours did but it's not what's significant it's not what is important it's not what God wants us to focus on he wants us to turn our attention shift our focus to him to heaven to that forever home this isn't it guys this isn't it this isn't it wake up this isn't home you gotta know this isn't home when you know that in your spirit when you know this isn't home and you have an eternity in heaven waiting for you oh you can breathe you can be free to truly rest and relax and you can can shift your focus to not not these piddly things that don't matter you know but to the Lord here and now I'm not saying it's easy. It's absolutely not. And there are so many struggles that come along with it. But God says to expect that. Not only to expect it, to, but to rejoice in it. Because it produces endurance. Because it brings about a restored faith in us. One that humans could not give nor take away from us. One that will follow you through into eternity. Work on something today that matters. That means something. Work on you, on your spirit, on your relationship with the Lord, on something you can carry with you to your forever home. Stuff. As much as I love stuff and little pretty things, it's nice to bring you joy, you know, here in the world, and you sh we should experience those things. But they're not important. They don't matter. The way things look doesn't matter. God's not concerned with our body as much as I want his healing, as much as I want him to touch me. I don't want it if it means changing God's will for my life. If it means not getting the full ext extent of what God has for me. If he has something for me, I want it. And if that means it's suffering, it is what's best for me. As hard as it is to say aloud, it is what's best for me. If it's what God has for me, he's making me into who he wants me to be. And above all, I know, because scripture tells me so, that pain has a purpose. That my pain here is establishing a home in heaven for me, an eternity for me. And it has a purpose to him. And when we turn to him, when we immediately turn to him in our pain, do you know the Bible says that that gives the Lord a joy that we can't understand? That it blesses Him. That when you turn and seek the Lord in the middle of trial, it blesses Him. Can you imagine? You bless the Lord. I, it's just, I'm so excited and, and, and honored to be in a place where I can bless the Lord. Where I can speak His name. Where I can worship him, where I can know that he is my God. I used to hear all the time that the end times were coming when I was growing up, that God was going to come back again, and I always, you know, I knew what the concept was, but I just, I, I couldn't imagine. I thought, mm, probably not in my lifetime, you know, maybe in my grandkids' lifetime. And when you're young, you want to think you have time. But that's one thing none of us have. We never know about tomorrow. We never know. We just don't. We don't get to know. We're promised eternity in heaven. If we follow the Lord, believe in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and follow Him, we're promised eternity. 
We're not promised it here on earth. We're not promised tomorrow on earth. We're not promised to get to be with the people we love. And we don't know when God's coming to take us all home. All his children. We don't know. But what we have to do now as children of God is save as many people as we can. Wake up as many sleeping souls as you can. Wake them up. Remind them of these truths that this isn't our home. These things don't matter. They're booby traps designed to distract you from the important things, the love of God. I know there's many things we can't understand and we want someone to blame, but God is not it. He is never to blame. He is always with you. I just want you to take a moment when, when the video's over, if you will, and talk with the Lord, especially if you haven't in a while. Speak to him. Ask him to reveal to you the areas in your life where you need change, where you need to focus on what's more important. Ask him to give you strength if you're weary. Whatever you're lacking, ask him for it. Have the strength to call on him today to give you what you need. If you can be brave, be bold with the Lord and speak to him today what you truly need for healing, for wholeness, what you're lacking. He can help you have those things and then you can be restored for service. You can be restored to proclaim the goodness of the Lord, to tell people about what he's done in your life. When healing and restoration happens, it lights a fire in your spirit that no one can put out. You start to see those changes occurring in you and in those around you. You know it's the Lord. You feel it, it ignites something all in your life, your spirit, and you're never the same. You can't go back. I want that for each of you. I want so badly for each person to get to know the love of God, the love that surpasses all understanding, everything we think we know. This love goes above, uh, above it all and deeper in your innermost being. Everything in your innermost being desires that love above all else. No other love, just that love. And when you have it, when you have it in your heart, oh, in your soul, you can never go back. You can't go back to a different way of life because you can know the beginning of wholeness as close as we come to knowing wholeness in this earth. It's a beautiful thing. It's freeing, liberating. If you will, help wake up some sleeping people today. Help ignite a fire in your life. That you can spread it and share it with other people. That you can begin to light that fire in your community, in your little group. We don't have to be taken down and depressed and discouraged and afflicted especially in this time that, that, that's not what God has for us those are spirits and we can speak spirit of depression spirit of affliction we can proclaim our body falling in line I'm not saying it takes away all pain or all problems no but it establishes a relationship with you and Christ in a way that can never be taken from you. You turn to him for guidance, direction. That's what he asks of us. What I'm asking of you for watching the video. I feel my life calling. 
as to help be a lover of God's children, God's people, to help wake up the sleeping, to live louder than the world, to live louder for God than the world, be louder for Him than any noise around you, live stronger and harder for Him than anything else. We have nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be self-conscious of or fearful of. God is fighting for us and leading the way. He's made this battle for you. He's designed it for you. Whatever you're going through, there is a blessing, a lesson, a victory in there for you. And remember, that battle you're fighting, it's God's battle. It's not yours. It's God's battle. He's fighting it. It's His victory. When you win, you give Him that glory. He'll do it over and over and over again. Thank you for listening today, listening to what's on my heart, what I feel the Lord wants me to share. I'm really new at this, and just let me know if it helped in any way. Thank you.